Before we start the experiment, I want to know, have you ever tried getting drunk and accidentally passing an interview at Google? Me neither. But the guy called Steve Ballmer apparently managed to do that, although he got into Microsoft rather than Google. What's even more interesting is that he was the CEO of Microsoft for 14 years after being promoted directly by Bill Gates. And now you're probably wondering, why is this guy getting drunk and talks about some CEO? You see, thanks to Steve Ballmer, there's a famous theory that having the right amount of blood alcohol concentration in your body, which is around two bottles of beer, will give you superhuman coding abilities. And this experiment has been put into practice by the University of Illinois, where several men were giving vodka cranberries before being asked to solve brain teasers. Which sounds like a perfect experiment to me. At the end, the tipsy group performed one and a half times better than the sober one. See this tip of the line? That's what they call the Bolomer peak. But why is it called after him? Well... I got four words for you! I love this company! Yes! Long story short, this peak is gonna be our goal in this video. And of course, we're gonna be solving some coding challenges, having those superhuman abilities. To make it even more interesting, I will do the experiment with two different types of alcohol and we'll pack it up with some mate. The third drink, mate, is simply full of caffeine instead, a good alternative to alcohol. But keep in mind, we're doing this for the sole purpose of the experiment, of course. I'm definitely not encouraging anyone to drink alcohol here. I also almost never drink alcoholic beverages myself. Sports, healthy food and rest is what you need in life as a programmer. All right, so we have our first contestant, which is Berliner Kindl. It's a very famous local beer. And yeah, actually beer is cheaper than water in Germany. So let's open it. Oh, I'm so bad at this. Cheers. Ah, that was a bit too much. All right, we're back in the game, baby. Let's see what coding challenge we've got. Both of the challenges were sent by a friend of mine, so I don't know, um, I don't even know what the challenge looks like. All right, so Code Wars. Good choice. Nice. Uh, the Pell sequence is sequence of integers defined by the initial value. Okay, this seems like a formula that I need to implement. So if we give it a one, we get one. If we give it a three, we get five back. This does not look that difficult. So we'll simply return. Uh, I, I, will, I will just write the same formula that we have here. I don't know what else to do. So we will multiply two by Oh, so it seems like a recursion, so um, I should probably call pen again, but n minus 1 plus pill n minus 2. Okay, I can feel the beer. It's kind of tickling in my body. All right, let's, let's run this. Should work with first numbers. What? Oh. Okay, the, the call stack exceeded because we didn't check for the for the null and ones. All right, so if we have a null, uh, sorry, if we have a zero, we have to return zero, which means we will have a little check here. If n is equal to zero, then return zero. If n is equal to one, return one. And yeah, let's also cover the um, undefined values. If n, or rather, uh, null values. If n is equal to null, then simply return. I cannot type, I'm sorry. All right, let's check this. Oh, everything passed. That was easy. I hope the second one is a bit more challenging. All right, so I'm already feeling a bit weird, still no superhuman powers, but you know, we still have a challenge to complete. And our second contestant for this challenge is, um, that I had a bottle of wine. I guess that's gonna be enough for the second challenge. I, I, I heard that the second challenge is gonna be more complicated, but <laughs> you know, let's give it a go. Ah, that wine is terrible. Oh wait, it's actually fine. Isn't it weird that I changed my mind in two seconds? All right, we have our second challenge here and I'm gonna paste the links of the challenges in the description so that you can try them out as well if you're interested. And of course, make sure you subscribe and like the video if you 
enjoyed so far. All right, Pete likes to bake some cakes. He has some recipes and ingredients. Unfortunately, he's not good in math. Blah, 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 blah. Write a function cakes, which takes a recipe. Okay, I think I can draw it on a whiteboard to have some kind of an illustration for myself. By the way, my drawing still skills did not improve uh, since, the, since the last time I drank beer. And in the recipe, let's say we need three apples. This is my apple, by the way, Comica. No, please, let's, 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 let's try it better. Okay, it looks, looks a bit better. <laughs> this is an apple. And let's say we need 600 grams of milk. And this is our package of milk. It looks like one, I would say. So what we have in our inventory, so to say, is um, two apples and let's say 700 milligrams of milk. So this is my seven again, and the milk. And this is the milk. So my first thought here is we simply compare how much of an ingredient is left if we use it in one of the recipes, because the goal is to find how much, how many, how many dishes we can make by uh, using the, what we have for in, in, in the recipe. So if the recipe needs three apples, oh, actually let's change it to three, otherwise we cannot make anything. So we have three apples and recipe needs three apples. Uh, so we can use all of the three apples, which means we can use them three times. And for the milk, the recipe requires 600 milligrams of milk, but we have only seven. And how many times can we use this 600 from our inventory? Once, right? Because we will have only 100 left from here. So if we subtract 600, it's gonna be only 100 and you cannot use it again to, 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 to cook anything. And my idea is that we simply loop through the elements that we have in the object or an array. I think it's an array. No, it's an object with key value pairs. And uh, we are simply gonna take the minimum here, which is one uh, because of the milk, which means we can prepare only one meal. Okay, so I more or less understand the problem. Actually, it's not a difficult problem at all. It's just, uh, yeah, simple logic and looping through arrays. But uh, yeah, try it out and let me know in the comments if, you've, if, if it worked for you. I honestly think the wine hit me kind of hard already. This is the last sip, I promise. I would rather drink the mate that I talked about. So it's just sugar inside and um, Palm grenade. So it's just uh, a lot of caffeine and it should help me to solve the last challenge, I would say. Nice. Okay, so I would say we first look through ingredients that we need, take a single ingredient, see if it's actually available in the second array, so we're not gonna do any nested loops and we're gonna be efficient. And we will simply check if flour exists in, in available. If it's not, we already return to zero because we cannot uh, cook anything. If it is there, we will um, divide available by recipe not with the modulus, but simply divide it. For example, here it's gonna be 1200 divided by 500 to 2.4. So we'll type an integer, so two. Um, we will do the same for the rest. Okay, so let's quickly see what I did here. As I said, I looked through recipe ingredients in the recipe and I put them in the available object and I simply get both values, like grams and uh, amount of apple, so to say. And instead of using the integer, I use the math floor, which will automatically take the integer and remove the decimals. So from 2.4, it will just take two. It's, this is what I need, the, the, the floor, uh, the, the rounded floor to the floor. And then if, so in JavaScript, you can actually divide numbers by zero, although in math, it's impossible. So in JavaScript, if you do divide a number by zero, you will get an infinity. And here I'm checking that if, 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 it, if the answer is infinity, then uh, the minimum available is zero and we return and we will simply return zero. So we cannot make cook any dishes. And we just continue with the loop. Um, if there are more ingredients, then we simply get the, in a, a different number other than zero. So if, we, if there are three apples needed and we have, let's say seven apples, then we can have three times two. So we can, so six we can use the apples two times from our inventory. If, if there are ingredients missing in the second object, we simply uh, use this Boolean value. And at the end, we simply return whether if it's a Boolean, then zero of obviously, or otherwise the minimum value. I think I did it pretty fast. Usually it, I spend some, some time on even easy tasks, but this one, I'm, I managed to do this one in a very short amount of time. So 
I think I have some superhuman abilities. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks to Steve Ballmer for his amazing theory. I think we were able to test it somehow. Smash the like button and subscribe because we're gonna have more silly challenges like this in the future and have a nice day.